In our last episode, we checked out the Thunderbolt Grotto in Staniel Key. Today, we're leaving in search of Wi-Fi and have set our sights on Saddle Key, which we enter via the narrow inlet from the ocean side. Saddle Key, an incredibly gorgeous private island, features a snug anchorage with good protection that we learn happens to be on sale at the moment for just $11.2 million. So we are anchored right here. The following morning, and true to early winter season in the Bahamas, weather conditions have changed drastically overnight. So our perfect little hurricane hole uh, is not so perfect this morning. We wanted to film this. We like to keep it real, and this is what's really happening. We had to come out of bed and really early today and um, and deal with this. Yeah, the other problem is the pass that we came in through on the ocean side uh, was breaking. So we're trying to go through a shallow entrance here. We came in from the ocean side, so it had that effect again. I think we've talked about before where the water's funneling in um, to a small space and getting shallow abruptly. And so it kind of had waves yesterday breaking a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. But now today that it's blowing 16 knots or so, and seas are turned up, it looks a little formidable. So we're gonna try something a little bit risky. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but we're trying to get out of this little lagoon and go on through a really shallow, area and it's relatively high tide not the highest high point of tide but it's high tide um, but it's raining so it's going to be a little bit hard to use our visual aids um, the reason we're doing all this is because the system that's coming through is bringing wind that is more northerly it's northeast and we want to go south so downwind yeah, so we'll sail downwind, which is better than bashing. Um, and we really need to get food, laundry, and internet. <laughs> so that's why we're doing this. As it often happens, the Wi-Fi speed, unfortunately, wasn't fast enough to upload a video. So the search continues. So that's seven feet, so that's accurate. We're one six feet running around, right? So plus three, yeah. Plus six feet, yeah. Yeah. Whew. Five, six. I think we, I think we escaped it. So look at the ocean side. Oh gosh. Like look at the breaking water. So the other reason we didn't want to go to the ocean side is because it's going to be a little more rowdy than the bank side. So not only do we not want to go through that path but we'd rather travel south down the island chain on the bank side, so the more protected side. And I think we made the right decision. We're almost out, so. See the, the water the color difference between there, so we're at 12 feet, and that's probably gonna jump to like 30 or 40. This is dark water vein. Yeah. That's where we're heading into. So this is our current laundry situation. Yeah, it's moved from the little hamper that we have and has accumulated and taken over the entire aft closet. So we're going to try and take care of that today and head to Black Point, which is a new location for us. Um, but it supposedly has a ridiculously awesome laundry facility. Uh, it's the second most populated town, I think. I think we, yeah, I think the cruising book said it was the second most populated spot so after Georgetown. Yeah. We read yeah. so much in that one day, I can't remember any of the details. We, we never covered read. the entire Bahamas chain in like one two hour period. Yeah, we read the entire cruising guide um, on one passage and now we actually can't remember anything. You're definitely on your last t-shirt. Yeah, you found this one hidden somewhere. You've been wearing too. your other one for a long time. I dug that one out of somewhere and apparently you're bills out of boxers, which I find kind of hard to believe. And I think you just can't find them, but. So yeah, we're going how many miles away? I think it's like eight. That's probably two hours. Um, no, we can motor six if we want to. Oh yeah, we motor faster now, an hour, hour and a half. I don't know, anyway, here we go. <laughs> After our rainy trip yesterday, we finally found good Wi-Fi and are on the move again today, heading further south along the Exuma Island chain. 
We're sailing to a new to us island called Black Point on this super windy day. It's a short trip and after anchoring, we're eager to check out the little town which by Exuma standards is not very little at all. So we are on shore now in Black Point, first time here. Um, every time you go somewhere new, it's just a little bit exciting and um, kind of has a different feel to it, this spot already. I'm not exactly sure why yet. Um, yeah, it's a little overcast this evening, but we just want to do some light exploring, get the lay of the land before we come in tomorrow and do some laundry. laundry barge today instead of the garbage barge. <laughs> Finding a place to do laundry where we can easily tie up the dinghy and not have to travel too far inland is always on the to-do list when cruising. And even when a spot checks all the boxes, it can still take all day to do laundry. Singer? Whoa! Luckily, we don't wear a whole lot of clothing in the Bahamas, but it's still early in the season and not warm enough yet to be living in bathing suits 24-7. So we've managed to produce two huge bags over the last month. Having a washing machine on board would be a dream come true, but it's one of the luxuries we've chosen to live without in order to be able to be out here now, cruising on our little home today instead of some time in the future. And the longer we are out here, the more convinced we've become that we are making the right choice. So it's now three hours later, the tide is way down, and I am done with laundry. I did like three massive bags, so it's a great feeling. Number two. Number three. So, just turn on the engine, and we're about ready to go. Doesn't look like there's much wind right now. Um, eight knots? Yeah, it's almost eight to 12. Yeah. So we're not sure which sail we're gonna be flying yet. Um, so we're just gonna kinda get out of the anchorage and see what happens. Speaking of which sail to use, let's take a pause and talk about something Bill and I have been excited about for quite some time now. We alluded to it in our last episode when we showed you our windlass install and Bill revealed that our new bowsprit was a factor when configuring its position on the deck. We're talking about our new bright blue Code Zero and we're gonna show you what it's all about. So now that we're out of the crazy wet, windy weather we were up in the northeast of the United States in, um, I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys our new addition that we added while we were in Annapolis. Um, this is a Code Zero or Jenniker. It's another light air, um, primarily downwind, but can also go upwind sail. Um, and it's on a furler, which makes it really easy for Grace and I to handle. If you recall, when we were using our asymmetric spinnaker, Grace and I would hoist the sock, and then we would use the control lines on the sock to lift it up, and the spinnaker balloons and goes poof and opens up. And then when we have to take down the spinnaker, you get on the bow, and the wind's usually piped up by that point. That's how luck would have it. And we have to pull down as hard as we can to get the sock to collapse the kite. This, on the other hand, is like any other furling sail. Um, so we were able to furl it from the cockpit, which is really nice, especially for a shorthanded crew like Grace and I are on. So you can see, you know, I wouldn't pull from here normally. Um, we normally pull back from the cockpit, but you're able to control the lines. Um, you can see the furler spin. So it's on a continuous line. And you pull it as many times as you need to spin it and circle it up. The whole system is removable, um, so we have all these fair leads for the furling line run back that you can clip out. Um, so yeah, so it just comes off like that. You can see the AT cable inside. Um, that's what's providing the rigidity when the sail is up, and that's how we're able to furl on that cable. So there was a couple things we needed to install back in Annapolis um, in order to get the pole attached to the boat. This ring came with the bowsprit, and um, I 
drilled and tapped it into our bow fitting, which is integral to the boat and is where our anchors come off of. So I had to go buy the proper size tap kit to match these, this hardware, and then I drilled and tapped it in. So that's pretty well secured to our bow fitting here. The other thing we had to install um, is a pad eye, which locks down the pole. Um, so the pole is able to slide through the ring, and then there's a clip that clips into this, and it keeps the pole from being able to move or fall out of the boat. Um, to install this, I made a uh, backing plate out of G10, which is a plastic composite. Uh, it's a very strong material. We used it in a lot of different places, a lot of different backing plates. Um, the other cool thing about these bow sprits is they are retractable. So you pop this open. There was certain measurements based on the weight of your boat as to how long of an unsupported span you could have on the pole. So what they considered support, supported is the area. So behind this is considered supported length. So I had to measure that versus what is protract, protracting out beyond the bow. Um, based on the weight of your boat uh, and how much load you generate on this pole, you're allowed to have uh, there's a different ratio between the supported and unsupported length. So as you can see, the sail has no UV protection on it. So every time we use it, we've been dropping it and storing it in the bag. It's nice that it stores in its, in its like sausage here, right? So it's a pretty small sail to fit. Um, you're not like shoving a big spinnaker sock and everything. Oh, so that part's nice. And with that, let's get back to our sail. Trying to get me more involved in a uh, boat boat job. <laughs> Got it part way up. Sight. The animal is not in her natural environment. <laughs> the boat is off autopilot and she's hand steering. <laughs> so we're maintaining about wind speed, uh, which is blowing about 6'2 apparent at an angle of about 120. This is such a cool sail. I know, right? <laughs> there you go, honey. Smile. Don't drive knock me in the water even though I know you want to. Oh, I'm off my game. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no way. Come to surf. Yeehaw. So one of our goals from our last uh, ocean crossing was to get our sail plan uh, very versatile. So as you can see today, we've gone from code zero and full main uh, down to reef one full jib as we've headed further upwind and the wind speed has increased about 13 or 14. One of our goals was definitely to have it like shifting gears in a car. So we are able to tailor our sail plan and amount of sail area we're flying very easily. With the addition of the code zero on a furler, we're able to do it from the cockpit. So we're no longer having the asymmetric up and pulling a kite down. We could just unroll the Genoa and then roll out, roll back into code zero or vice versa. So we've already, we've already throttled up and throttled down several times today based on wind conditions. Um, and yeah, so it's working really well. We're just waiting on one more sail, which is a staysail, um, which will also be on a furler. And that is arriving in the Bahamas, hopefully next week or this week. It's supposed to be here yesterday. Um, but that'll give us even more options when the wind is really blowing. So we're just trying to have from light air all the way up to heavy air, the right sail plan for the boat. And uh, that's one of our goals, to keep on cruising and do ocean crossings. So here comes another one of those gear shifts. The uh, wind is down to 10 knots now. We're only doing six. Now we're gonna go roll out the code zero and roll in Genoa. So we're gonna go change our gears now. Genoa is gonna go away. So we'll ease. Dropping. Pull. The jib is away. Okay, so we're gonna shift this out. That is fully out. Sun is out. Sun is out. 
incredible color of blue here. Um, this is kind of the watercolor I was imagining um, when I thought about the Exumas, when I heard people describe the Exumas to me. It's definitely very different than the Abacos, which is a little bit more of a greener shade. Um, this is definitely turquoise, like super turquoise. Um, it literally looks the same in person as it does on film. I keep looking at the GoPro because it's so beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's no color editing is going to be needed in any of this footage. 